we, we like to focus on a central topic, but 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 I want to talk about this week. What do you do when you pray and fast and fast and pray and you don't get the desired results? What do you do when you you study the word and nothing seems to change? You attend church faithfully and you 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 you, you have spiritual mentors and. Although you, you follow their advice and you get on a prayer call and, and you're doing the right thing. And then things seem to, 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 to get worse. In a nutshell, beloved, what do you do when you, you're trying to believe in what your eyes can't see? Again, what do you do when you're trying with all your heart to believe? What your eyes can't see. My God, my God, my God. Have you ever prayed a prayer and immediately saw the results? I mean, you pray and and before you can stop praying, you you get an email saying they want to interview you and you alone for the promotion. You, 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 you pray uh, and you meet this interesting young man and you pray and you ask God if he's the one and, and almost immediately you get a phone call from a friend who's saying, you know that God's interested in you. you. Your child is sick and you decide to pray and fast and, and immediately you see results. Results so significant that even the doctor has to come up to you and say, hey, this is a miracle. In moments like these, it's easy to see the power of prayer. Although the enemy will be quick to tell you in these moments, it's going to happen anyway. It was just luck. <laughs> it was just a circumstance that happened, that things occurred the way they, they occur. You were going to get the interview. The God was going to call you. The medical results would have happened regardless, irregardless of prayer. But in moments like these, you don't, you don't have to have tremendous faith. You don't have to ask the question James Cleveland asked in that song, where is your faith? I mean, you got the wind at your back. Everything was, is happening the way you wanted them to happen. But what do you do when you pray your 100th prayer and, and the cancer diagnosis is worse? What do you do when you pray your 500th prayer and the foreclosure notice is on the desk of the judge? What do you do when you, you wanted the happy family and now you find yourself faced with a divorce or maybe a second divorce? What do you do in moments like these when, when praying to an unseen God starts to seem absolutely foolish? Can I tell you something? <laughs> As one who's seen his fair share of time just like these, there will be moments when, when, when prayers will just seem like words, empty words with no meaning. When you question the very existence of God himself, there will be times when you, 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 you will walk through the, as David says, the shadows of the valley of death. A season of absolute silence. And then, a season of absolute silence. Silence can make us restless. Silence can make us restless. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone and they... They gave you the silent treatment. It's frustrating, right? You want to say to them, listen, yell at me, scream at me. You even have my permission if you got to. Again, if you just absolutely positively got to, you can even curse me, but just say something to me. Why is that? Because it's in the silence that our mind searches for answers. And typically, it's the absolutely positively worst answer that it comes up with. And this is, is what happens when God is silent. When God 
is silent. You, you question why you spend all those days and nights in church when God is quiet, silent. You, you question why you even gave your tithe. That money could have been used to fund your 401k, right? You question you spent that time, you, you spent reading your word with your husband. Maybe he would not have left. If you, if you spent that time with your kids, maybe they would be doing better as a husband or wife in their family. These are the things that happen when God himself is silent. But can I share something with you? And if you get nothing else from this morning call, you call them right on time. And I want, you to, I want you to put a pen in this very thought. Often in God, <laughs> when we don't hear from God, <laughs> when we don't hear nothing, we don't see any signs of God, when we cannot trace what he's doing, he's often doing his greatest works. You cannot see him lining up to promotion. You don't hear the conversation someone is having today, maybe even right now at 8.07 in the morning, about doing business with you next week. You have no idea what's going on inside the human body regarding that sickness that you prayed a thousand times about. Beloved, this is when God himself is doing his greatest work in the silent moments of our lives. And as an aside, mm, let me share with you one reason God does not answer prayers when we want them, the way we want them, and how we want them. In 2010, I remember the story, you might have heard about it yourself, but the rapper Puffy brought his son, get this, a $360,000 Maybach. Again, $360,000, his son was 16 years old. Now, you might think, what's wrong with that? After all, he can afford it. But what if he gave this 16-year-old kid a car with more power than he can handle at that stage of development as a driver? What if Papa gave his son that car, and, and, and being like most 16-year-olds, he was texting while he was driving? Imagine if he gave him that car and his son had a terrible accident. Where am I going with this? Here you go. And this is the part I want you to remember. A blessing in the wrong season can be a curse. <laughs> and because God is not a God of curses, we must develop the muscle within us called patience, patience, patience. In the Bible, we often talk about Abraham preparing to sacrifice his son Isaac, and we, we talk about it a little cavalier. We don't really think about the enormity of what Abraham was a preparing to do. Now, since it's early in the morning, I'll, I'll spare you a few of the details, but, but when a person sacrificed an animal, the first thing they did was to uh, cut the throat, and then they would remove the inner organs, and they would, they would burn the organs. I'm going to leave it at that. That's enough. I guess you get the visual. But Abraham was preparing to do this to his, his child, y'all. Think about your son. Think about your daughter. He was getting ready to do this to his child. Let that resonate in your spirit for a moment. Now, when he pulled out the knife, he had no idea what God was doing in silence. When he drew back the blade, he had no idea what God was doing in silence. When he looked down at that child who, who may have looked just like him, he had no idea God was doing something amazing in silence. Follow me, follow me, follow me. While all this was going on in my mind, I could see a ram getting separated from it's heard. <laughs> While all this was going on, I could see a ram sniffing on the ground for food. In my mind's eye, while all this was going on, I could see that ram getting stuck, getting his horn stuck in the thicket. All of this was happening while God was silent. God was actually doing his very best work. 
which begs the question, if God did that in silence for Abraham, a far from perfect man, I might add, what is he doing for you? Don't stop praying, beloved. If God did that in silence for Abraham, a far from perfect man, I might add, what is he doing for you? Don't stop reading your word. If God did that for Abraham, a far from perfect man, what is he doing for you? Don't stop fasting. Why? Because God is always in control, and God is always just. Again, he's in control, and he's just in all his ways. Now, now why is that important? Let me share this with you, why, why that's important. Then we're going to pray. To be just means that God hates it when people treat you unfairly, that he hates it when you, when you have pain in your body. That he hates it when people lie to you. God hates it when you're mistreated. The Bible tells us that God grieves, which means it doesn't sit well with him when these things happen. So when it happens to his children, and I say when it happens to his children, his children, and I don't want to go off on that, but when it happens to his children, and if you are his child, allow God to handle it. Again, allow God to handle it, and you continue to pray, to fast, to stay in your word, and continue to trust in God, continue to trust in God. Again, continue to trust in God, even when God is silent. Father, we come to you this morning and say thank you. We thank you for the very breath of air we just breathe in. We thank you for the very breath of air we just breathe out of our body. We thank you for the ability just to hold the phone or to listen to this conversation. We thank you for the strength you put in our bodies, dear God. We thank you for coming through uh, another weekend, a weekend where somebody on Friday had somebody in their life that they loved and adored and cared for. But this morning they're headed to the funeral home to give them make the final arrangements. Dear God, we know that somebody on this call, dear God, was faced with enormous calamities, but, but you've allowed many of us, to my knowledge, to avoid this, 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 this situation. So, dear God, how can we not say thank you? And in these moments, dear God, of silence, I ask that you, dear God, prevent the enemy from bringing them all the wrong answers to their prayer. To dear God, give them the strength to stand up and be strong and, and not lean into their own understanding of what they should do, but let them dig into their heart of what you've already poured into them. Allow them, dear God, in these moments of silence not to give up on their faith. Lord, dear God, let us, dear God, understand that you are doing your very best work when we have no sign that you are there. Dear God, this morning on this call, somebody is on this call, not because they want to be, but somebody under the sound of my voice is on this call because they have to be. Someone is on this call because they have to be. They, they have a feeling in their soul, dear God, of desperation. They have a feeling in their heart and their mind that this is the last the last resort, dear God, <laughs> that they have nowhere else to turn but to you, dear God, that they have no other choices, dear God, but you. So, God, I want you to take control of their hearts and minds in this morning, dear God, and give them the direction they need in this moment. Dear God, I'll take their hand and stand with them in the breach, dear Father. Dear God, as we wait for you to do your good and perfect work in their lives, and we will trust you, dear God, especially when we cannot see you. We will trust you, dear God, especially when we cannot feel you. We will trust you, great God, that you are even in the moments when we can't trace you. Because you're a good God. You're a mighty God. You're a loving God in all your ways. And we adore you. We adore you, dear God. Do great and mighty things in your children's lives. And we'll give you the praise and the glory and the adoration that you so richly deserve. Because you are our God. You are our King. And you are our Deliverer. 
In your son Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Trust him, beloved, when you can't trace him. Trust him, beloved.